or that version of Spiral out of control, that proactive trying to initiate, oh, it was slightly suboptimal, and then, you know, momentum kind of falling against you. Then the other way around. Number one, it's easier to improve off of, and number two is if you're making the plays and they're slightly up, they aren't poorly thought out. It's just slightly, you know, mis-execution, maybe a little bit too early, things like that. Again, the improvement rate of a squad and the kind of future for them is far greater than that. That plays overly passive, lets that go, and then just goes, well, we will never learn how to make that kind of comeback or what we should be doing in the circumstances because we're never, you know, making that proactive decision-making, pulling the trigger like we typically stay up here on the desk at HTC North America. But Tempo, cool, calm, and collected, kept their control on one of Gale Force's best battlegrounds already. So you got to be looking at this and going, Tempo, the fact that you fell behind, kept your cool, and we're kind of pressured even in the off lane and able to turn it around against Gale Force. Temple Storm still sitting in top shape. As soon as that draft started, I said one thing and one thing only is how does the Maev work around this? The Maev, Medivh, but mostly the Maev. And right there, it was answered by Tempo Storm. They opted for first pick. They, or Gale Force actually took the battleground, so Tempo had first pick. They banned their, the Garrosh, making sure that Fury couldn't get that. And instead of banning everything else, we saw the Dahaka ban, maybe trying to prioritize that front line of Glaurung. Did not work out for them as the Maev factor. Definitely way too strong there. And I got to feeling that Gale Force, unless they opt for first pick this game, that's probably going to be banned out going forward. I would still say in the world of drafting, I don't I don't mind what Gale Force did from beginning to end, except for the Lunar. I just look at the last yeah. pick of Lunar and the, you know, everything when the Phoenix ban and the secondary ban phase and then committing to the Lunar in the last slot. I just go like, I feel like this could have been a little bit Tychus. more thought out. I mean, something something safe, yeah. something strong. I think Tychus fits that. He's not exactly the huge playmaker, but post level 10, you have Odin, you have defensive tools if you do get trapped in that. Lunara is far more offensive than she is defensive. And I think Tychus kind of fits that, bridges that gap of he's pretty offensive, but he's really defensive and can survive a lot. I mean, th seriously, think about some of the ancestrals. Like, I, I think I saw one of my the best ancestrals I've ever seen. One. You heard me say, oh, as he's casting it, because I'm just like, dang, Akka <laughs> is really looking out for the how much damage is coming in into this Lunara right now. And if you have to multiple of those in one game and she still can die after a bunker time frame, like, I think it raises the point of like, hey, can this hero survive within this meta yep. well enough? And it feels like the answer is very much no. Uh, normally you'd be like, well, maybe you could leaping strike out of that, but you can't leaping strike out of a tether. So you're <laughs> going to have a hard time out of that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and bring up some of the tweets that you guys have been sending in using the hashtag HGC. Thank you very much for this, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, you know what? Fury himself here tweeting at the beginning of the day, nothing for us to lose in this series. While Temple Storm has everything to lose, so it should be a fun series to watch. Going to go ahead and give it 100%, but still just to get ready for the playoffs and show that we are going in strong. I'm excited to uh, excited to play as long as my internet doesn't hate me. <laughs> you know, I you know I, I think it's pretty good when your internet doesn't hate you. In Crow and keeping it simple, GFE, you can do this. I so, mean, you know, you're looking at Crow and you're like Crow got booted from that team, but he's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If if they win, we we have a high probability of going to Sweden. Gale Force, you can do this. Bless RNG. You know, nothing makes you know the enemies, if you will, the enemies of HTC bigger friends than just going like, oh yeah, wait, 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 wait. If you beat them, I get in a better position. Now, you know what? We're friends now. We're ba we're pals. You know how I know they're taking it seriously, Gale Force. How? Okay, so what you guys didn't see during the, the the lobby screen and before during all the videos, I looked over Gale Force all rocking zealots. What portraits? What might that be referring to, Jay? Uh, you know, Zealots might have been the team that knocked out Tempo Storm at Western Clash. Just saying, a little bit of mind games going on there. And normally you'd be like, well, Zealots uh, got second. They were really good, you know, sitting at the top of the ladder. But with the time, everybody was like, how good is Zealots, right? Yeah. It was a lot more questionable uh, when that actually all unfolded. We're figuring out where the battleground is for game number two between these two teams. Tempo Storm sticking to their love for Volskaya Foundry. I will say this, uh, you know, we haven't seen any Tracer today. We've seen uh, hits and misses with Tracer. If we're going to look at Tracer, I would say this is going to be the battleground. I think it's a little bit comp dependent, depending on what your enemy is going. But this is one of the more forgiving maps if you want to go early. Tracer has a lot of room to work, a lot of room to skirmish. You can double up with the Tassadar on this battleground and feel equally as strong. So I am curious if we're going to get the Tassadar from one of these teams. Jaina, obviously still high priority, but the hero you mentioned earlier, Junkrat. Junkrat has a very high priority, a lot of poke, a lot of sustain a lot of displacement on this in a targeted area so the priority on hero is going to be really interesting on this compared to two yeah it is going to very much be and one of the coolest things i think from 
looking at North America right now, as it stands, is every team has their own little individual flavor that not everybody necessarily agrees on. I think from almost the top down, uh, you know, even Heroes Heart Esports has their own unique, like what they consider to be slightly better, slightly worse. And then that changes even when it comes to the, the maps themselves. Yep. North America has been never been this like, we don't agree with you what's good and bad. And I'm still sitting here to go and I can't tell if I love or I hate it. Uh, but it, it makes it definitely makes the drafting a lot more interesting. It does. I think a lot of it just again, once you get the Medivh Maev kind of out of the way a little bit, you know, obviously things change. Maev, another hero to consider again with Gale Force having first pick this time. They opted for first pick. They gave away that map pick over to Tempo Storm. Tempo Storm has a much better record when they are in the second pick slot, so they are more than okay with this. But does Maev get banned out? Does Medivh? come through. I'm really curious what Gale Force's mindset's going to be, or do they target the offlane again? This is a battleground where I don't know how I feel about targeting the offlane, beyond considering the fact of, you know, that's been something that teams were able to gain the upper hand against Temple Storm. It's just because, like, the offlane exists on Vault Sky, but it doesn't, like, exist. You know what I mean? It's it's like the, hey, can somebody soak bottom temporarily for this small time frame? Maybe for two waves you get that kind of, you know, side soak in the 1-4 split, but most of the time, most of the time, it is a little less valuable on this offlane. That in mind, though, Gale Force doesn't care. Still sticking with the Dhaka, man. And I wonder if Tempo will go Blaze in their first two picks. If not, the hero that you mentioned in game number one, I think even raises in priority on this battleground is a Thrall. We've seen a lot more Thrall as of late, and this is one of the battlegrounds I think he does well on. A lot of skirmishing potential, a lot of poke potential with that chain lightning, but he also has the ability to really enable a lot of team fights. So we'll see. Dhaka again banned out here. Tempo Storm. Is it the Garrosh? Is it the Maev? So far, Maev, Mediv, one of them's getting let through. And really in the hands of Psalm, I want neither of them. I, not so much uh, if, I, if I'm a Gale Force Esports player. That's from that perspective. Because watching him on the Maev as a you know, commentator and fan, it's always a great time. Medivh is being hovered here for Tempo Storm. Questioning if they want to commit. They will end up indulging here with the Medivh. And so now that we see the Medivh, it gives it over to Gale Force, the Maev. But again, I, I brought this up at the beginning. If they do end up, or the Garrosh, that's a good point. If they do end up going with the Maev over the Garrosh, personally don't feel like it packs the punch. Like, I would rather see the Garrosh because I don't know how any other way to say it other than personally does not feel like Mikey Doll's impact on Maev is first pick worthy. Unless they either up that, and I don't even think that's so much him as much as it is the team working with the Maev. And they opt in the same direction. They're going to go with that Garrosh, but... You have to deal with Psalm now. So Maev seems likely. Do you need the Blaze here? Do you feel you need the Blaze, or can you go back down the mouth hill round? I did question coming into this if we would see Tempo Storm with this on the line. Win and you're in. That's all you got to do. Will we see them go back down the melee assassin route that we knew in the early part of the year before the clash? They've distanced themselves quite a bit from that. But on the side of Gale Force, one thing that I feel will happen is a Junkrat before that second ban. It seems way too likely. He can stay very far back outside of Maev's reach, gives you a lot of poke, and gives you a lot to play around. Because you said, if Michael Udall's not on Maev, what's it going to be? You can still leave Jaina if Jaina's still high priority in your arsenal. Biggie can play that. So I think there's definitely a lot of things for Gale Force that you can still make happen against a Maev. Temple, though, they're taking their sweet time here in the 1-2 over what is a not-so-surprising first pick. I can't, I can't help but feel like this is partly do we commit to the Stukov within this rotation or do we not? They end up not going with the Stukov, going with the High Hanzo here from Tempo Storm. Second game in a row, we've gotten them a Hanzo before the secondary ban phase, which this, I don't disagree with. I'm just saying that we've seen Hanzo. He sat at the top of the meta, then he disappeared minus insert two to three teams. Now suddenly a small spike back with the Hanzo priority. I feel like the, Hanzo to me, has such flexibility in yeah. his talents, right? And this is one where you're a single point objective. You know Garrosh is going to be lurking on the front line, has no mobility, and has Hanzo, you can chase him down. Redemption at one, even if you want to go scatter, build, scatter arrow build. But this is the one where the Redemption at one and the Sharpened Arrow heads at level seven for the armor reduction pair so well against the Garrosh and so well on a chosen battleground. And you can go Explosive Arrow at four. We'll see if we get that. Now Gale Force is the Junkrat part of the equation. I hope so. I talked about it, uh, but I'm afraid to talk about it on the side of Gale Force just because I'm, I'm not kidding. That was every game for them, and then it does not even touch. And they haven't wow. touched it since that week. They have let it go through every time here, Jay Howe. I have no idea 
what happened in that kind of thought process on the side of Gale Force. And I'm not even saying that like it has to happen here or there's no chance, but it's like the one week that you outperform and everybody goes, Gale Force Esports, you're making a name for yourself here in North America. The hero that it seemed like was the breaking point was the Junkrat. And the next week they were like, Junkrat who, mate? Like, I don't know yeah. who this guy is. I still remember that Towers game where yeah. Fury's on the garage and Michael Udall somehow in a game full of action at zero deaths and was just blasting people. I think he had like five or six kills that game. That was kind of the statement game of the Junkrat. And as you said, it's a, I think it's a bit surprising to both of us. It's not there, but we find ourselves in the second band, Tempo Storm. You know there's going to be a support and you know you got to have the offlaner. Blaze, obviously you might want for yourself, but again, Thrall is such a prominent counter that we might see against the Blaze if Tempo Storm goes that route that I wonder if Tempo might just try and do something altogether different. Fan out of the bound Furion. Do we see the Gale Force matching of the bands onto the support? This is not something we see many teams commit to, but we also haven't seen many teams let both of the higher priorities let through at this point in time. And also the Mayab Medivh trade-off has been less you know, kind of stalemated, as we have seen out of a lot of the series here in North America. And honestly, I, I'm very thankful of it. I feel like we've had way too rigid of drafts for what feels like more of just kind of conforming than it is creative or thinking the draft through. Gale Force Esports, what do they want to ban out, though? Another another major priority would be those front lines or, again, more focused in the off lane if you're, for some reason, concerned with something Glorong would be on. I'm just trying to think of... If I'm looking at cattle on Johanna, I'm okay with that. If I'm looking at cattle on Varian, I'm okay Diablo. with that. Material. I would I would much rather have a Tyrael ban at this point to deny that. I mean, it gives you the mobility against the Garrosh. I've been wondering where Tyrael's been against some of these Garrosh picks as of late. Tyrael had such high priority. I was doing the numbers on that. North America, generally we're like not a Tyrael region, but North America has played a lot of Tyrael since the changes earlier this year. They also boast the highest win rate of all three major regions that we have on Tyrael, the only one sitting above 50% coming into this weekend. They've played it well, and in particular, Tempo Storm has played it well, so I wonder if we'll get it again. I would like it. I mean, we've talked about Tyrael time and time again, you know, at the very beginning with how prominent he was, I was like, oh, I'm so excited. He's died off quite heavily. Always into the Garrosh, I will always look at my number one responses, I want a Tyrael. From beginning to it's just, does the rest of the comp cater to it? Mayav does cater enough to it. I will say, actually, for me, the, one of the most profound things in this draft is honestly that Stukov ban. We have not seen an agreeance second ban face. Okay, okay, well, if you're gonna take one of them away, we will too then. They make this, uh, both of us play on the back foot of supports. If that happens, it's always up in the top half of the draft. And I, I personally feel like it works out really well. The Alex is now going to be taken purely based on that exact same thought process. But one of the burst supports, Rhaegar or Uther, is still an option for Gale Force that they would like. I think the Rhaegar definitely has been more prominent for Aka Especially Aka. as of late. Yeah. yeah, level four. You know, we've seen him go different builds and mana reduction. You talk about sustaining these, the mana reduction at four, potentially going the healing totem. Again, he has the shortest cooldown healing totem that we have of heroes with similar abilities because he's technically a shaman. He gets a 30 second one, uh, but we have seen kind of a change in that. Still need that support. Obviously, Malfail, Mal, Malfurion and Stukov both banned out. If you're not going Alex Strassel, Uther doesn't seem likely, unless you're going to Lucio. Did you know Rhaegar used to get that a level one? Feels bad. Most people don't realize that. Because his is different. And you look at him and be like, why is it different? Is that force the same as everybody else's? It's like, but it used, to be, it used to be way different. <laughs> he used to be the only one. He got it at level one. And it did percentage max healing. It was insane. Hold up, though. Thrall, Thrall comes, comes online in. for Gale Force on the off lane. And there's the Rhaegar we were talking about. Yeah, the Thrall definitely has risen in priority a lot for B-Kid. It's done a lot. We've seen it into Blaze. Heroes Hearth kind of opened up this book of like, look, if you're going to go Blaze, we're going to bring in some some thunder in the form of Thrall. It's now, all over Solo Q, dude. All over. Thrall is everywhere. The thing is, like, he's been, people have been sleeping on him for forever. It's like, well, I mean, this guy's ever since he kind of got that minor rework for the talents at level one and then all the changeups, I feel like he's been there. All of a sudden, people woke up. HEC is awoken. I mean, obviously, we're not in double support meta either, so that obviously helps quite a bit. Uh, but either way, we still need somebody on the front line. Johanna, I'm not a big fan of. I feel like that's popular for them, something to go into. Tyrael, though, I will say this is one of the few games I don't mind the Johanna as much. If you look at every single hero on that comp, it works well with Johanna. Not great, some great, not but none of them are awkward, right? None have a different kind of mentality that the Johanna would have versus, you know, the Tyrael. That in mind, Tyrael is Tyrael. He is one of the best, if not, in my mind, the best warrior. 
just purely based off the sanctification. They go with the more forgiving one. This is a case, especially into the Phoenix. I don't know. I actually, if I was drafting him in this game, I might say I like the Johanna more than the Tyrael. And that, that's a bold statement. It's tough. Only I, because everybody's so slow. Into the Phoenix. You got the slow from Jaina. You've got the garage toss. Yes, it's there. Playmaking. You got my Evan Blaze to follow up in any condemn. You can follow up on that. We'll see. We'll see. I, uh, Johanna, pretty unsuccessful on this battleground. I still think she's sitting at one win on this battleground, more than 10 losses. And it hasn't looked well. It hasn't looked pretty. But it's been a lot to counter, like a Maev style, a Garrosh style. This time, you've got the Maev. You've got a lot of tools to go along with it. So I think this, if you're going to turn that around a little bit, it's Tempo that can do it on cattle and with this composition. So definitely things look a lot brighter here. Yeah, the only thing that normally when you see in this type of situation is what heroes damage dealer types are with Johanna, which I think they all align. And then are there any too scary on the other side, which I think she counters enough of them slash should have the peel available. We'll find out though for Sky of Foundry for game number two, see if Tempo Storm can eke ahead and pull themselves up in 2-0 over Gale Force Esports here. Mike Gudel just making sure his buttons work before he gets out of the gate here. Actually, that's the most important minigame whenever you do spawn into a Heroes of the Storm game is trying to figure out if whatever mobility spell you have can get you out of the Hall of Storms and you instantly mount up. I don't know if you knew that, but like some of them can some kind of, of be Some of them have been changed, too. Like, yeah, I know. Like You can't switch strike out of it anymore and get the instant mount, which, I mean, makes me a sad panda, but... He's a missile coming out of there, but he's not, a, he's not able to mount. Either way... You know, iron skin cooldown reduction here on that Johanna. Again, there's a lot of slows. You got the slow from just about everybody on the side of Gale Force, potentially roots, things like that. So we'll see how that plays. But scatter arrow build, not the redemption at level one. So you can still go the cooldown reduction. At Michael Udall is very far forward there. No fear. Blizzard are going to be thrown down on the wave. The level one fight continues. Fury not able to find himself a flip quite yet. And Tempo Storm technically actually pretty heavily wins the laney situation just because of how slow rotation Garrosh has to make it. Now they're going to get the Clash once more, the 1-4. I expect it not to change at all. It's probably going to be like this pretty consistently unless Fury can keep finding flips, but that's going to be on the cattle. Now the body block turning it around, a little bit too ambitious there, leads the first blood, Tempo Storm. Great punishment I, there. I was really surprised. That, you know, I was just about to make a comment, right, about the fact that too often we'll see, and I, you know, you, you got to call it like you see it. Michael Udall has been caught out a few times when he's like, look, I need this globe. I got to go get this globe. I've seen Crow do it once before. It's like that globe is important towards your quest. That time he went out there, I think the globe might have transitioned over to a neutral, and then it was like, oh, and that was fine. They were fine until he flipped the Johanna over, which... You know, he was already sitting at about 50, 60% health. That was a bit surprising to me. Globes are one of the few ways to kind of bait somebody into a micro objective in competitive Heroes of the Storm, but it is a real strategy. It is a real thing that you can set up and something in Gale Force kind of fallen victim to right now. I agree with you. I, I just felt like it was a bit um, frustration is almost you, the word I want to apply. was down. You weren't following. I mean, you've got to be aware of the cooldowns, right? I mean, it's a 14-second cooldown. And, and that's where I feel like that kind of the tone of frustration is where I'm going to apply. Because when I think if you view the math problem in your head, I always say it's a math problem. I don't know why I refer to that. I just I the view, the realistic equation of what we're going to see unfold with the leaning circumstances, right? I have Jaina, pretty good wave clear. I've got Phoenix, pretty good wave clear as well. Rhaegar, one of the best to accent a, any major warrior. Garrosh, not bad, but enough kill potential. Jaina's got enough kill potential too. So you're like, I should be doing well in my four man. The Johanna mixed with the Hanzo and the wave clear behind that and then Psalm with the threat of the four is enough to where quickly Garrosh goes, wait a minute, we've got to try and make something happen. We should be looking for kill potential. I would say, you know, it's one of those just not letting up to a stubborn attempt to recover a losing laning situation because, again, you should not be looking at this and going, oh, Temple Storm dominates the laning situation. Gale Force should be able to bring at least some threat. B-Kid's done a very good job so far on his level one quest. He's actually at 19 out of 20 stacks. You just have to get the, the kill after you use that chain lightning on somebody. There's going to be an iron skin out, making sure. Again, going into that level one talent, I mean, you get so much out of it. We also see, you know, getting that extra movement speed during Condemn. It can be used as an engagement tool. It can be used as a disengage tool. One of the things that I see people do is you get the slow on that front line onto a Johanna. All of a sudden, she pops 
iron skin, and then she's using that condemn to engage on you because you're already in a very aggressive position to make sure and capitalize on it. But then all of a sudden, Johanna's like, JK, and now you've got the full force of a blaze in my ev behind you. So we'll see if Gale Force gets baited into that. 38 percentage and counting here for Tempo Storm. Garrosh went up for another attempt at a combo and not able to hit that scattering arrow that he's stacking there at one. Sevens are here for Tempo Storm after Mike hits a huge trade there with that Kona Cold. Fury trying to capitalize on the healing. We're going to see big impact there, tethered in, pulled back. Alex Straza heals coming down, but they into the fray, not able to save him. Fury trying to cut away, but he will not make it out. Three kills now for Tempo, two in this trade and surely the first protector of the game. Phoenix, you got to be careful. When you get that tether on there, he tried to use his warp instantly, and the minute you get that interrupted, it's so difficult to recover from that. You just don't have the options. Seven was picked up in the middle of that fight. That's why in the fray was a little bit behind. That's by no fault of Fury. Instead, that's going to be a protector going over here to Tempo Storm. We've got a full level lead. We've got three kills to zero. They're about to open this map wide open here at the top lane as it's going to start wrecking these structures. Yeah, this is where Tempo is going to make the standard cycle of pressure. Look towards the well as well. That was a bit redundant. The you know, well but as well. The biggest thing here is mainly that you focus on the well to be able to prep point B. If you can get the fort on top of it. I mean, at this point, Tempo Storm's looking a little bit past that. Now they're looking at, yo, we're going to hit 10. What can we get beyond that? Can we threaten keep? Should we be threatening mid? But as we were saying, standard is front wall, front wall, and then well in the top half, so you can best yourself here. But Tempo pretty much has the world is their situation, hitting tens before they even lose their very first objective. I, I mean, that's a rare statement. This is uh, so to paint the picture of how this is going to look for Gale Force is barring any kills that Gale Force is going to be able to achieve, thirteen will potentially be here right as the next control point spawns and Gale Force they'll be trying to recover in that experience. So I really wonder if Gale Force will find an opportunity as they hit level 10, maybe go for an invade. And that's exactly what Tempo Storm is doing. They're coming in, they love to pick up these items. And when they have a lead, they will be very aggressive. They do this on most battlegrounds to invade siege camps and things like that. But when you're on a camp, or when you're on a map like this, with this type of lead, you go and you take all of these items that you can. I wouldn't mind to see Tempo double down, and that's what they're going to do here. Uh, I was going to say, rather than responding to the top half for cycling pressure mid, instead just push on bottom. Even if you trade four for four, which is not going to happen because fan's defense is great, but uh, it puts yourself in a position to where you're just furthering the tens, you're furthering the race uh, towards the 13, and really setting yourself ahead. Temple Storm getting as much as they can here with the heroic advantage. Now, Gale Force Esports down two forts. Well, I mean, the one thing that Gale Force is potentially doing is giving themselves that 13 advantage. You can see the Water Elemental in pursuit of the Hanzo. Vicky and Fury in assault, and Fan puts down a little bit of spray action. Be like, come get me. Ain't happening. Temple Storm did back out, though, of the Siege, not willing to take that race any farther. Because that answer on the side of Gale Force Esports towards the top half of the map, that rotation was pretty much after the bottom fort was already taken, right? And that is what I like to call responding to a losing situation. They were already taking a, yo, Temple's winning the siege. Can we just keep going, you know, and help double down on the decision making they already had? Which is totally fine, but how slow they had already made it. If I'm Temple Storm, I go, wait a minute, you're going to commit to the top. I'm All right, here's the key for a wall. We're just going to keep going. If you want to go trade for trade and make that rotation a little bit late, Tempo didn't commit, nor did they get that pressure. Instead, backing out, looking to pick up more turrets, which if you know how Tempo Storm likes to play Volskaya Foundry, it's pretty much items on top of items on top of items. And right <laughs> now, all four members on your screen, in fact, have either a turret or that biotic emitter. Turret and healing for everybody. You know, I was actually surprised when we saw that heroic. It took a while to get locked in there by Gale Force. I love the fact that Gale Force is being so aggressive, but just like they gave that up, now they're going to see if they can catch Tempo in the flank. They have that conveyor belt to get the speed up. Good dismount there onto Fury. There's going to be the knockup. Cattle and team, they're looking to aggress forward. Indomitable force to be used. Saw him. He's trying to make the plays. The warp out this time by Biggie to safety. And Dread, just like we had talked about earlier, 13 picked up right as the control point is here. Gale Force, they've still got a ways to go. A long ways to go with the 12 and the 13 race. So much so the Temple Storm able to kind of poke and prod around mid a little bit longer. May even be willing to force this siege with the 13 Talenteers. Instead, going to spend this time and cycle up towards top. Seven seconds Shana. out. Shayna and Rhaegar, they're going to get a they're going to get a proper response here. Cleanse on to Michael Udall. Going to buy him some time to get to safety before Glaurung and Fan could make their way down. Does give Gale Force a bit of experience. They still have some structures. They're going to get a turret of their own. But again, when it comes to those fights, Dreadnought, when it 
gets to 13 to 13, which Gale Force should have enough time to do if they can just get a couple more waves. The amount of items that will be here for Tempo, it, it just, it ups the difficulty. The handicap is very much against you. I, they might even concede it altogether. I mean, double biotic emitter, triple turret. I honestly look at that siege and I go, Tempo gets half the keep with that alone. Not even considering the actual protector, yeah. what's going to be happening. So I feel like very likely is going to be forfeited over by Gale Force unless they can make a way to get the skirmish up here. And well, they're, they're going to make it. it in time. They're going to try and force it. Thrall is showing this rotation that he's slow and left behind. Alex Straza bringing out the Dragon Queen. Dragon Queen, one turret is down. There's still many more available. Fury has eaten so much damage so early that there is no possible way that they could engage in that. Two healing pulses. Now the protector and the turret. They've already opened up the bot lane. They'll probably make a pit stop here at the mid lane, get this fort down for a bit of experience, get that race towards 16. And then that bot lane dread that they've already prepped. I mean, although this protector is eating quite a bit of unnecessary damage here, see how much they try and force. Mike Dole ends up beating the combo here. I'm surprised that his pathing dreadnought, that ended, he ended up going down and then coming back up, and he was taking damage the entire way, and all of a sudden that's kind of changed the mindset of Tempo Storm as they're just kind of pushing down the mid lane now. They're getting structure value, but is it going to set up so enough? There's a taunt! They end up getting the combo and getting the kill there with the Sundering afterward before they can even get off any kind of healing onto Psalm, and that was exactly what Gelfort needed to get back into this game. I feel like... Tempo might have misplayed that a little bit. The save on the Michael Udall helped quite a bit, but Tempo, you know, they got a decent amount of experience, but giving up that kill and giving up the pressure now neutralizes quite a bit. Absolutely. I mean, the initiation on the Mike Udall and being able to force out the Rhaegar Ancestral, you look at that as Tempo Storm and you go, all right, slow siege, don't risk anything. We've got this on our side. Even when we get out of this, the 16 advantage is into our favor and they have no Ancestral healing. No way they can defend that. But then getting all in there onto the Maiev and losing that, I mean, it is a massive devastation. And again, it's Fury on the front line, able to make that type of play to threaten Tempo Storm. He's going to threaten Cattle this time with the flip over, forcing out the Blessed Shield. Glorong with a big flank there after they already get the kill on the Caterpillar. Psalm so gonna come in. Maev getting that lockdown with the three man's Warden Cage. Fan of Knives, spam as he locks down three. Ends up getting the first three kills. Jet Propulsion not gonna connect there. Mikey Doll, can he make it to the conveyor? Psalm so says nigh. Four for nothing. Tempo Storm. So I'm trying to make more happen, but I don't think they're gonna get much more. Gale Force definitely overplayed their hand there, Dreadnought. And that's just, you know, it's a moment where Gale Force, they got a little bit, they got the kill, and they're like, look, what if we go in? The Johanna pick was primed and ready, but Maev was already starting to make their way back. Cleansing Flames came down and really just capitalized. And once Maev came back, it was all she wrote. Psalm doesn't need to say more. He just walks up, his presence is felt, and it's basically over at that point. I mean, Psalm is such a menace on this hero that Gale Force just lost track of time a little bit. The one thing that amazes me about Maya as a character uh, from beginning to end with her impact in HGC is she is, I don't think I've seen a single hero that can change a team fight within like her relevance in the fight, how fast she is making a play and then changing it is literally point one every single time, right? It is always, it is just one E maximum range with one W, getting the tether. And if you get that tether, as long as you've hit the right targets at anywhere near a reasonable time frame, you've won the fight. Whenever she comes in, you're on the other side. You're hitting that OR button because that's what you need. It's just that full panic. You mash that as fast as you can because you need every bit of firepower or saving abilities you possibly can. You know, the Ancestral that was used on that one, I'm pretty sure it was still down. So definitely not an opportunity to use that. Fury going forward, trying to find an opportunity for engagement, but he is taking a lot of damage in the process. Every time Fury's been looking to get that trade tempo has applied way too much damage to him into the front line to where it's been pretty unrealistic for him to get those type of, you know, skirmishes, even slightly adjusting for it with his 13 not going with the double up and instead going into the shielding on his groundbreaker. We got ourselves 25 seconds out from control point C. Gale Force ended up converting this bottom, excuse me, fort into their favor. Now going to get siege damage on the keep front wall. I, mean, I can see rotation. their mindset, but they just put themselves in enemy territory. And, you know, they can get the, the go out 
Mike Udo, there's the dismount. There's going to be the knockup. That's going to buy a little bit of time. Condemn going in for that extra movement speed. Now they're going to be thwarted back is Gale Force. They've got to be careful. Three turrets and two helium pulses on the side of Tempo Storm. Yes, Gale Force has to make something happen, but is this where you want it? Well, see, that's the thing is I actually think this is the best place for Gale Force because if they fight on control point C, there's no way. That's all going to gain max value. This lane is the most open corridor they're going to have, and you can avoid the Warden's Cage, the Alex Straza, the Blessed Shield value if you end up taking the fight into the open lane. Now, Tempo has been able to push Gale Force back. Now, make it to those kind of tight corridors where they can expect to thrive with all of their spells and, more importantly, this composition. Cooldowns, a lot of cooldowns used on that turret. Fury forced to use that Indomitable as he ate quite a bit of damage. He's going to fall back towards this totem, get some of that healing. Gale Force are going to clear out the lane, buy themselves a little bit of experience. They're still in this game. Michael Udo on B-Kid coming in for the big flank. Let's see if they can get onto the Alex Straza. Dragon Queen is out. Sundering's not going to connect. Here comes Michael Udo as he's coming in, but the bunker is down, Dread. Fury did get the Ancestral, and the Warden's Cage is not going to connect for really anybody. Big Impact getting the body blocks onto Psalm as the Tether comes in. The damage is there, one for one so far. Big, big hit. Trying to get the kite out. Well, he is getting a bit of damage as June, healing the team up with that Dragon's Queen. Temple of Storm has 65%, and Gale Force no well to tap. They're going to throw down the healing well. They're going to reinitiate. Now is the time, and they're going to make it. This is so high risk for Gale Force. Glaurung goes in. He's going to get tossed back, but the Blizzard was already down, so now Glaurung, he's looking to make it out of here. There goes the healing B-Kid. Bee Bee he's going to get healed up and just be able to make it out of there alive, but the coordination missed there on the side of Gale Force Dreadnought because that flip happened, and Michael Udall been a bit more patient. I feel they could have got the takedown. The one thing that does work out here for Gale Force is that Maev has a long ways to make it back. This keep likely going down, but they should have the tools, I believe, to at least defend and not lose game. They need Jaina down here now, Dred. They do, as fast as possible. I am so surprised that they rotated up. Yes, the keep is a foregone conclusion, but if you wait too long. It's too much, not enough damage onto the objective itself to stop this from being a potential GG. They end wow. up getting the rotation down, and Temple Storm not willing to move up and commit. At least there's enough threat maybe from Fury there to kind of deter that. Maev is showing on mid. Will Temple play the slow race to 20? I think they can. Here's wow. going to be a minion wave. It should be near enough. We'll see if they get the laser down, and then Maev comes over. But if Maev makes that rotation to bottom and they get this keep as 20 anyways, that's when I, it feels yeah. like this is showing, hey, would you like more time in a 5 versus 4 on even footing? Because that was all it was willing to give onto what would have been a 20 spike no matter what. No matter what, Tempo end up getting the 20. They end up picking up the keep, and Psalm is now joining the ranks of Tempo Storm. They're still feigning it. 20 seconds. I don't think it's enough time. They don't have enough time to end. They have enough time to get the kill. They're going to turn their attention towards the mid keep. They want to at least get the well, knowing that that is going to be the closest retreat point. Laser goes down. 10, 10 seconds still left on this. If they can keep the minions pushed out, in comes. Ooh. Maev looking to make the play, unable to do so. Keep going down. Two seconds, one second. Looks like the keep is held. Keep's going to be held for now. With Tempo Storm trying to use this 20 and siege up. For now, it looks like they may have interest in doing that, making the rotation back down to that turret camp. Tempo Storm, whenever you lose the arsenal after that control point C, the first answer is, well, you just got to resupply up. Go ahead and take Gale Force's turret camp. You know they'll be back for theirs in a moment. But for the downtime, using that 20 onto the camp. The big condemn forcing the warp on big impact. I wouldn't be surprised if they get an initiation knowing warp's down. It's a major cooldown. Keep so very low, and Jaina Tempo Storm top. just completely sieging up. Yeah, with Jaina there, I mean, this keep, it gives a bit of experience, but more or less, it gives control. Next control point is mid, so even if you have to defend against catapults, it's nearby. The main problem is the bottom. 20, still nowhere here. Glaurung poking away. Looks like they should have enough to take down this keep here in just a moment. Scatter arrow, coincidentally, does not work. Flashlight might be the only thing to get it. <laughs> I don't even know what got it there. Honestly, that seems like it was just, it had a hard time standing. Psalm going to use the Warden's Cage onto one. Sundering goes down. B-Kid able to kite out. Condemn, not going to get the initiation well. But the Blessed Shield plus the Dragon's Arrow. The damage is there, and Phoenix is already dead. Psalm looking for another two-man tether. But the root, the damage, a nice a job getting the bolt out. Bunker's thrown down, but Cattle is going to get the healing from June. He'll be able to survive. Psalm's going to get flipped back. Great knockback from June. Stops the advance of Fury. Catapults now making their way here in the bottom lane. They're sieging up. Shield starting to fall on the side of Gale Force. They're clearing out the minions, but there goes the ice block. Psalm unable to capitalize, trying to make his way back to healing. Fury receives the Ancestral, 90% falling, and now Tempo Storm trying to finish this out. Condemn coming in, locking down two more. Psalm getting the follow-up, 30% in counting, and that is it. No way that Gale Force Esports can hold off this. Tempo Storm. 
dominant game number one, carrying over here to game number two. And now one game away from not only earning this victory over Gale Force Esports, but more importantly, your ticket as the number one seed of North America to the midseason brawl. Things looking good so far. I mean, you got to give credit to Tempo Storm. I mean, they're, they're holding strong in moments where things get a little bit dire. It seemed like this game, though, controlling the pace over that first control point and being able to get the early kills, a little bit of aggressive position, I think, at times from Phoenix kind of did them in in a couple fights, and it was kind of like, all right, well, this is not a good start, unable to get the